roller coaster. A student that was here a month ago. I remember you. I remember you well, my dear. And so again, on Yoni Ivanova, the same little business. Come in. What's your business? I brought something to pawn. Here. But the time is up for your last pledge. It was a month to the day before yesterday. Give you interest for another month. Be patient. Be patient. That is I please, my dear. Well, then I'll be patient. Or I sell your thing right now. Give me four rubles on your new money. I'll redeem it with my father's. What will I have an interest rate right in advance if you like, sir? A ruble and a half. As you please. I'll take it. There you go, my dear. It's ten Colbicks on the room for a month. You owe me fifteen Colbicks on the room and a half for the month of the concert. You all told me about the same calculations of twenty Colbicks for the previous two rules. Thirty Thirty-five. Thirty-five all together.
But what do you mean hopelessly? Oh, I mean completely hopelessly, sir. Knowing beforehand that nothing will come of it. Let's say, for example, you know beforehand and thoroughly well that <laughs> this man, this, this well-intentioned and useful citizen, well, under no circumstances give you any money. And <laughs> why should he? May I ask? He knows I will not repent. <laughs> and so, knowing beforehand that he will not give you anything, you still set out on your way and go. And then why go? But what if there is no one else? And nowhere else to go? It is necessary that every man have at least somewhere to go. For there comes a time when one must absolutely go somewhere. When my daughter first went out on a yellow ticket, I had to go for my, my daughter had a yellow passport. <laughs> Sir, can you? No, 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 can you? To put it more distinctly, dare you, looking upon me, say that I am not a pig? <laughs> That's so be it. I am a pig, and she is a lady. <laughs> I am the image of a beast. Katharina Vahamuna, my wife, is an educated person, and by birth an officer's daughter. And we live in a cold room. And she got cold this winter and began coughing and spitting blood. And has a weak chest and a tendency to consumption, and I feel it. Do you suppose I don't feel it the more I drink, the more I feel it, and that is why I drink also, so that I may suffer twice as much? <laughs> she was a widow when I married her, with, with three small children, each smaller than the next. And she married me because she had nowhere else to turn. Do you understand, sir, what it's like to have nowhere else to turn? No, you do not understand yet. Through many wanderings and, and, and numerous <laughs> misfortunes, it's been a year and a half since we found ourselves here at last in this Capital city adorned with so many monuments. And here too, I found the position, found it and lost it again. Do you understand? This time, it was my own fault I lost it. For my weakness had come out. <laughs> Meanwhile, my daughter, <laughs> Weak 
Anastasia. Are you going to pay me back? Because a man ought to owe nothing to his wife. <laughs> but it is much better if a wife looks upon her husband as a benefactor. <laughs> he is a trustworthy and established man. He serves in two posts and already has his own capital. Of course, there is no special love either on her side or on his. I and now I hasten to Petersburg. So that every minute Well, of course. Since I am unable to, to do without a secretary, it would naturally be better to pay a salary to a relative than to a stranger, provided he's capable of doing the work, and maybe his university studies might keep him out of the office. <laughs> Junior is firmly convinced that she will achieve everything by her good influence on her future husband. Of course, we took care not to let Joker Petrovich in on these further dreams of ours. Above all, that you will become his partner. This is how Dunya wants to arrange it, and I fully... Do not accept it! Do you understand, sir? Do you understand? It is necessary that every man have at least somewhere to go. But there comes 
a time when one must absolutely go somewhere. Give me a glass of vodka. Can't help but 
to chill when one has nothing to eat. What is this? It's a silver cigarette no. case. Take no. a look. No! This isn't silver. This isn't silver. He's wrapped it all up. Look how he's wrapped it all up. Yeah. <laughs> 
says, what were they beating the landlady for? Who was beating the landlady? Just now, on the stairs. What are you looking at me like that for? It's the blood. Blood? What, what blood? Nobody was here. It's the blood. Stop it. It gets clotted in your ears. And that's when you start seeing it. <laughs> Of 
that. This is all so stupid. He makes me sick. Do you know what? It's none of my business. But like he said he slept on the box in the passage in the corner by the door. By the door? Lying by the door? Yes, what's the matter? What's up with you, Holly? Nothing. Nothing. You see? The real murderer dropped those heroes. They must have dropped out of his pocket. When he stood behind the door. Mr. Rodion Romanich Raskolnikov. <laughs> a student. Or a former student. He's here. Sitting on this sofa. <laughs> what is it that you want? Because this is Raskolnikov. <laughs> yes, I am Raskolnikov. What do you want? Pyotr Petrovich Lujin. <laughs> well, I hope my now my name is not entirely unfamiliar to you. I suppose a, a letter I sent more than ten days ago. Almost two weeks, in fact. Hey, listen, why are you standing in the doorway, yeah? Let's start. Make room. <laughs> Here's the chair. And Roddy has been very sick. <laughs> but this is his doctor. Thank you. <laughs> but won't I disturb the, the invalid by my presence in conversation? No. Please. You may amuse him. <laughs> well, your mama. Huh? I... Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Never mind. Go on. <laughs> Your mama wrote a letter. Yes, I know. Uh, I know. So this is you then, is it the fiance? So you see, I already know. And enough! <laughs> I am quite sorry to find you in such a state. And I know you were unwell, I would have come sooner, but oh, one gets caught up. And in my line as an attorney, I have a very important case in the Senate. Not to mention the cares that, that you yourself may surmise. <laughs> oh, <laughs> your, your relations, that is your, your mama and your sister, are due here at any moment. I've got them an apartment for the immediate future. Where? It's right near here, in Bacalea's house. <laughs> I know. I know where that is. <laughs> Disgusting. The devil knows who the tenants are. But then, it's very cheap. <laughs> it's cheap. Well, I was unable to gather so much information being new here. But I can assure you, there are two quite, quite clean little rooms. In fact, they are, <laughs> they are just temporary since I found our real apartment. That is our future apartment, which is now being decorated. I myself am squeezed into rooms just two steps away. And is it true, sir, that you... Ah, yes, yes, yes. Is it true? Is it true that you told your fiancé in an hour of her consent. And what pleased you most about her is that she was a beggar. So that you may raise her up from poverty and have complete control over her and reproach her being her better Yes, yes sir. sir! To twist my words in such a way? I know who's responsible for this. It's your mama who said this. And in spite of her excellent qualities, I found her to be in a rather rapturous and romantic state of mind. Ever say another word about my mother ever again. Even one single word. I will throw you down the stairs. <laughs> you listen to me, my dear sir. I felt your animosity the moment I came in here. But I decided to stay and, and, and learn still more. I can take a lot from a sick man and a relative. But now, you never, sir. I am not sick! So much the worse, sir! Well, then you can go to hell! <laughs> How could you, brother? How could you? Get out! Get out, all of you! You're tormenting me! I'm not afraid of you! I'm not afraid of anyone anymore! Come on! Come with me alone! Alone! Leave me alone! I'm 
todo esse espaço em mim.
therefore you are selling yourself for money. And in any case, you are behaving basely. And I am glad to see you are still able to blush. I am hurting anybody, but only me myself. I haven't got to put a knife into anyone yet. And now you're getting pale. No, it's nothing. I just felt a bit dizzy. Sophie Simeonovna, 
This is my friend, Erzomichin, and a good man he is. If you have to go now, sir. All right, let's go. Let's go, brother. So if you see me on the I'll call on you today. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, man. I will tell. I will tell Padre Ivanov. You live here. And I'm staying here. Next The way things do work out. And it's a good day in the city. Well, good day. Well, as I recall, I was considering the 
psychological state of the criminal mind over the course of time and how it What interested me was a certain thought tossed in at the end. That is, there are those who not only can, but are fully entitled to commit all sorts of crimes, and to whom the law supposedly does not apply. That people are somehow divided into the ordinary and the superman. The ordinary is of a life of obedience and have no right to transgress the law because they are, after all, ordinary, while the supermen have the right to break the law. That's what the article says. Am I right? That wasn't quite my point. I merely suggested that the superior man has the right, though not legal, to overstep certain obstacles, and so demands the realization of his idea, which may be beneficial to mankind. I went on to develop the idea that all Caesars and all Mohammeds and all Napoleons were criminals. They didn't stop spilling blood, even innocent blood, if they needed to do so in order to be successful. From this I conclude that all great men, and even those who are the tiniest bit capable of having a new thought, are by their very nature criminals. But don't be alarmed. Society will never acknowledge this right in them. They will punish them and hang them, more or less, thereby rightly fulfilling their conservative purpose. And yet, for all this, in future generations, these same masses will place the punishments on a pedestal and worship them, more or less. Please tell me this. How might one distinguish the ordinary man from the superman? Are they born with certain signs? If a person from one category imagines he belongs to another, well then, anything well, that happens happen. quite often. <laughs> but the mistake is only possible among the ordinary men, and they never get very far. Well, you certainly set my mind to rest at that point, but there's something else that disturbs me. Are there many who have this right to commit murder? Generally, there are very few people born who are capable of having a new thought. One in 100,000. The genius are one in a million. The great genius, the crown of humanity, are perhaps only a few thousand born on the face of this earth. I don't know what, but there must be a certain law in this. You must be told, huh? You two are playing games. Be serious. I'm a brother. This permission to shed blood in all conscience is to my mind more horrible than if bloodshed were officially, legally permitted. Absolutely right. It's more horrible. No! You are exaggerating. There must be some mistakes in this one, yeah? We can think that. I must think. Society is well protected by prisons, banishments, investigators. Don't be afraid, catch the thief. What if we catch him? The certain right. Well, you're logical after all. But please tell me this. What about his conscience? But what business is that of yours? It's a question of humanity. That's it. Well, let him suffer if he has a conscience and recognizes his guilt. That will be his punishment as much as any prison sentence. It's just the two. I don't know if I can express myself exactly, but when you were writing your article, surely you must have felt at some point just the tiniest bit that you were one of these men you call superior? Well, it's quite possible. Shh. Well, if that's so, could you really bring yourself, well, because of some failure in life, 
to overstep obstacles, say to rob and kill? Well, if I did, I certainly would not tell you. I only asked to understand your article better. Well, let me tell you, sir, that I do not consider myself to be a Napoleon, and therefore I do not know exactly how I would behave under the circumstances. Oh, come on. Everyone in this country takes himself for Napoleon these days. Leaving already? I am very glad to have made your acquaintance. As far as your request is concerned, don't worry. Stop by tomorrow, around 11, and feel tall. Something in common. You never said that. Didn't I? No. I thought I did. 
The moment I came in and saw you lying here, with your eyes closed pretending, I said to myself, this, this is the very man. Do you mean the very man? What is this about? What is this about? Well, I really don't know what this is about. Perhaps you were just lying about the ghosts. I'm very lying. Well, then you should see a doctor. I don't need you to tell me I'm not well. No, I really don't know what's wrong with me. I think I'm five times healthier than you are. I didn't ask if you believe that people see ghosts. I asked if you believe that there are ghosts. No. I wouldn't believe it for anything. <laughs> no, no. You wouldn't believe it. But what about this argument? Maybe ghosts are fragments of other worlds. A healthy man has no need to see them. He lives in this world for the sake of order. But as soon as he falls sick, as soon as the normal order is broken inside the organism, one begins to realize the possibilities of another world. And the sicker one is, the greater the contact with this other world. So when a man dies altogether, he goes to the other world directly. If you believe in a future life, you can believe in this reasoning. But I do not believe in a future life. And what if there were only spiders there or something of the sort? May I ask you please to tell me why I am honored with your visit? By all means. By all means, your dear sister is going to marry Mr. Lusion. I'm sure you've already formed an opinion of Mr. Lusion, who is related to me through my wife. He is no match for her. Dr. Romano is sacrificing herself generously, but imprudently, for the sake of her family. It seems to me that you would be very pleased if this marriage could be broken off without harming anyone's interests. Excuse me, please, but kindly come to the purpose of your visit. I, I must go out with the greatest of pleasure. Having arrived here and having now decided to undertake a certain voyage, I now wish to see Abdotir Bonata and explain to her that first she will not get a single profit from Mr. Lusion, but instead, and most certainly, there will be a great loss. And then, having asked her forgiveness for all those recent troubles, I would then like to ask permission to offer her 10,000 rubles and thus facilitate her break. But you were really and truly crazy. How dare you say that? I knew you were going to shout. I do have these 10,000 rubles at my disposal. And I absolutely, absolutely do not need them. If your dear sister refuses to take them, I may put them to some even more foolish use. I will say this. In marrying Mr. Lusion, she will only be taking the same money from another hand. Consider it calmly, coolly. Make you to finish. I ask that you tell your dear sister what I have said. No, I won't. In that case, I shall be forced to try to obtain a personal meeting myself, and therefore to trouble her. If I do tell her, then you won't try to seek this personal meeting? I really don't know what to say. I would really like to see her just once. Hopeless to bad. However, you don't know me. May I ask? Are you planning on taking your trip soon? What? 
your voyage. You were just talking about it. Voyage? Oh, yes. I did tell you about the voyage. Well, that is a vast question. I have no idea what you are asking. I really wish to see have Gocha over my account. What's a serious request? Ah, look what I have forgotten. Telling her dear sister she's been mentioned in my late wife's will for 3,000 years. That is positively so. Mama Petrovna made the arrangements herself a week before her death. And it was done in my presence. Have a pleasant and a rather 
of rather pleasant significance for you. Well, sister, are you ashamed now? Yes, I'm ashamed, Rodia. Piotr Petrovich, get out. Don't you want to If I leave now, these parting words. I will not come back. Please, think it over. My word is firm. I don't want you to come back. public opinion and restoring your good name, I would have expected a little more gratitude. You seem to forget, Abdulaziz Romano, now that I had agreed to marry you, despite the rumors surrounding your reputation. Does he want to set my brother? Leave. And not a word more. Thousand rubles, and at the same time wishes to see you again in my presence. Oh, what answer did you give him? First, I told him I would tell you nothing. Then he said he would use all means possible to seek a meeting with you himself. He insists that his passion for you was a whim, and then now he feels nothing. He does not want you to marry illusion. Generally, he was rather inconsistent. His wife's death seems to have made his impression. He has planned something horrible! Seems I will have to see him more than once. Oh, I will keep an eye on him. I will let him out of my sight. Where are you going, Gravia? I wanted to tell you, Junior. I think it's better if we part ways for a while. Yeah, I'm not feeling well. I'm not at ease. I'll come myself later when I can. I, I will think of you and help you. Wicked! Heartless egotist! No! 
You are not worthy. He does. He does everything. Where did this come from? It was brought to me. Who brought it? Lisa Vieto. I asked her to. Were you friends with Lisa Vieto? Oh, yes. She came here, but, but rarely, because, because she couldn't. And she and I, we used to read and talk, and she, she will see God. Read to me about Lazarus. Why? You don't believe, do you? Read! I want you to, you went to Elizabeth. Jesus said to her, Thy brother shall rise again. And Martha said to him, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives by me shall never die.
Goodbye. Shall I open the window? No. 
Don't bother, please just... Don't bother! Thank you. 
afraid. Do you remember? I told you yesterday that if I came today, I would tell you who killed his identity. Well, so you see, I've come. And then yesterday, you were just really. But how do you know? I know. What? <laughs> Has he been found? No, he hasn't. And then? How do you know about it? Yes. <laughs> why why do you why do you frighten me so? I must be a great friend of his, if I know. Savieta, he didn't want to kill her. He killed her accidentally. He wanted to kill the old woman when she was alone. When Savieta came in, and then he killed her too. So you can't guess? No. Take a good look. You've guessed. Oh, God! God, Sonia, don't torture me like this! What have you... What have you... What have you done to yourself? There is no one... No one more unhappy than you are now. You won't leave me, Sonia. Oh, no! I will never leave you! I will never leave you! I will follow you! I will follow you wherever you go! Oh, God! Oh, my God! Why did I know you before? Why did you come here before? Well, so I've come! And now you've come! But what's to be done now? Together! Together! I... I'll follow you to hard labor. But what if I do not want to go to hard labor, so you, 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 how could you make yourself? What is this? To rob her, of course. Oh, Sonia, stop it! You were hungry, yes. It was, it was to help your mother, yes. No, Sonia, no, I wasn't so hungry. Yes, I wanted to help my mother, but. Another and Sonia, stop tormenting me! <laughs> but what is this? <laughs> what kind of truth is this? God, what kind of truth is this? How is it? How is it? You can give away your last penny and you kill in order to rob! Napoleon, Sonia. That's why I killed. Is it clear now? No. No. Just, just, just go on. Just go on. I, I will understand everything. I will understand everything within myself. I ask myself this question. my place and didn't have too long or Egypt or crossing Mont Blanc to begin his career, but instead had only a pawnbroker who had to be killed for money from her trunk in order to start his career. You see, my mother has almost nothing. My sister received an education by chance and is doomed to drag herself about as a governess. All of their hopes or in me. I was studying. I couldn't support myself at the university. And I had to take a leave for a while. So, I decided. 
decided to take possession of the old woman's belongings and use them for my first years. That's it. That's the truth. I told it sincerely. What kind of truth is that? Oh, God! I only killed a louse, Sonia, a nasty, harmful, useless louse! A human being. I realized that power is only given to he who dares to reach down and take it. He came to me as bright as the sun. How is it that no one has dared yet, or dares yet still? Passing by all this absurdity to reach down and take it by the tail and whisk it off to the devil! I wanted to dare, Sonia. And I killed. I, I only wanted to dare. Be quiet. Be still. Be still. You, you have deserted God and he's stricken you. He's given you over to the devil! I went there, Sonia. I, I only wanted to try. You should know that. But you killed! You killed! Oh, but isn't the old woman that I killed, Sonia? No, I killed myself! Sonia, stop it! Such suffering! Well, what to do now, Sonia? Tell me. What to do? Go now. Stand up. Go now this minute. Go to the crossroads. And first, bow down and kiss the earth that you defile. And then bow down to the whole world on all four sides and say out loud to everyone, I have killed. And then God will send you life again. Will you go? Will you go? So that's it, Sonia. It's hard labor for me. I must denounce myself. Accept suffering. And redeem yourself by it. That's what you must do. No. No, I won't go to them. I won't let them have me. I'll still fight them. They can do anything to me. They don't have any real proof, and they never will, I promise you. But they may still arrest me. If it hadn't been for one incident, they may have already arrested me today. They may yet still, but... It's nothing, Sonia. I'll just sit there, and then they'll let me go. Enough. I only wanted you to know. But you better be careful. You better not come to me when I'm in prison. Do you have a cross on you? You don't, do you? Here, take mine. I have another one. A brass one that belonged to Lisaveta. Lisaveta and I exchanged crosses. She gave me her cross, and I gave her my little icon. I will wear Lisaveta's, and you will wear mine. Take it, it's mine. We will bear the cross together, and we will suffer together. Take it. Give it to me. No, no, not now. Better later. Yes, better later. When you are ready to go to your suffering, you will come to me. I will put it on you. We will pray. And I will pray. You know I have been teaching you. You 
know several phrases. Otherwise, how are they going to tell that you're educated children from a noble family and not some part of a music box? This is not the puppet show. We are going to sing them a proper romance. Oh yes, but what are we going to sing? This was just an impromptu. They say I need a license to perform in public. What kind of a license do I need? I just buried my husband! What kind of a license do I need? Who killed them? 
But you did, Radion Romanich. It wasn't me. Oh, it was you. There's no one else. Up to your old tricks, eh? Still using the same theories? Aren't you sick of them? Oh, stop it! It's not a matter of method. We're talking alone without witnesses. You can see for yourself, I didn't come and hunt you down like an animal. It doesn't matter to me if you confess or not. I already made up my mind. Then what did you come here for? Why don't you arrest me? It's not in my interest to place you under arrest. It's not in your interest. If you're convinced, then it's your duty. So what if I'm convinced? For the moment, you told me my dreams, pure psychology. I still don't have any proof. Consequently, I've come with a proposition that you confess. It'll be tremendously to your advantage. And to mine as well, just to get it off my back, am I not being completely honest? But what if you are wrong? Oh, no, I am not wrong. And I don't have any right to put it off much longer. I'll have to arrest you. It doesn't make any difference to me. This is entirely for your sake, Radio Romanich. For my sake? But why should I confess? What's my advantage? Don't you know? It will considerably lighten your sentence. And I give you my sacred word of honor. I'll arrange everything so that your confession will come as a complete surprise. It will appear as though the crime were committed in a state of insanity. For I believe you were temporarily insane at the time. Please don't bother. I'm not interested in reducing my sentence. Don't disdain life. Most of it's still before you. Why not a lighter sentence, impatient man? Most of what is still before me? Life! Maybe this is God's way of saving you. The time will be shortened. So when are you planning on having me arrested? I can give you a day or two. And what if I run away? You won't run away. If you run away, you'll only come back again. Don't think for a moment that I have confessed anything to you here today. Hmm? I only listened out of curiosity. I haven't confessed anything to you here today. Remember that! I'll remember it. <coughs> well, goodbye. Good thoughts, sound decisions. Not sure. Now my brother can see us. Here is your letter. Can what you write be true? You had to crime committed by my brother. You hinted clearly now you dare not deny it. You say you have proof. Where is it? I warn you though. I don't believe it. Curiosity. Don't torment me. What is this? You are a very brave young lady. Everything about you is perfect. Your brother, however, is a murderer. He murdered an old woman who lent him money and with whom he pawned things. He murdered her sister, too. Yes, yeah, at that time. Who only happened to come in at the moment of the murder? I told this to Sophia Senor. The only one who knows this. Don't be alarmed. She won't betray you. It's not possible. He had no reason to, absolutely not. It's all lies. He killed her to rob her. That was his reasoning. Though he didn't make use of the jewels or the honey, because he was afraid to. Oh, is it likely that my brother is a thief? You've seen him. Does he look like a thief? I I've been told about it the way you have. But I have to believe the evidence of my ears. Why would he murder? <laughs> oh, that is a long story. Oh, I'm going to remind you. Everything is so upside down. Though I admit, things never have been in better order than they are now. People have such big ideas, as big as our country. 
exposed to chaos and the fantasy. Remember the many You will be used to others. 